Gen Z boss and a mini. Gen Z boss and a mini. Do you guys actually do any any work in here or what what's going on? At the beginning of my two decades in Asia, I had culture shock in a variety of areas. Things like not really seeing trash cans around and learning to carry your trash with you until you get to a convenience store or get back home to riding a train and everyone is really, really quiet because it's seen as considerate and you don't want to interrupt other people's commutes. To things like people really going out of their way to not really touch each other, even family members, because they're not as touchy-feely as Americans. Or even things like just going to a restaurant and not taking your food home because it's seen as unsanitary and so you eat the food that you eat at the restaurant and then when you're done you leave but nothing really shocked me as much as seeing the independence of young kids in schools they fix and clean their own lunches you often will see a young kid commuting to a school that's very far away on bus to train to another bus and then walking maybe 10 or 15 minutes and they're six seven years old sometimes super early in the morning and it's normal kid has a backpack on they're going about their day because kids are taught from an early age to be self-sufficient and then later on competent something that i worry about with the competition of gen z kids in america 26 percent of gen z applicants bring a parent to their job interview that cannot be right. Gen Z's, sometimes labeled screenagers, are those born from 1996 to 2010, which would mean that the oldest of Gen Z now are about 27, 28, and the youngest are about 14, 15. I'm not one to play the generation bashing game because quite frankly, I don't think it gets anything done, but there's a part of me that really worries about the future of Gen Z, especially from my vantage point in Asia, because when I hear stories like this, I wonder, are they going to be ready for the world that they're about to enter? 26% of Gen Z applicants bring a parent to their job interview. That cannot be right. Would you ever hire somebody that brought a parent? Here's who I blame for that. The parents, I the know. Parent. But that is unbelievable. <laughs> that is one in four. And of course, oh gosh, no. It is one in four. I wouldn't hire somebody who brought their parent to a job interview and I would as I escorted them out tell the parent here's the name and number of my therapist you need to phone them <laughs> listen to this seven percent of those people said that their parents even answered questions for them <laughs> during the interview there's always been a latent energy, if you will, inside of me that always kind of understood that you can't rest on your laurels and that you need to continually update your current skill set. When I first got to this country, I took the first three years and I buckled down super hard studying because I knew that any skill I acquired in this country would have to come on the back end of getting a hold of the local language. And in that three year period, I went to a job fair where they introduced this book, The World is Flat. When I first read the book, I was thinking, is this about technology? And yes, it is, but it's really a book about how the world is changing and that our paramount objective in this new world is to adjust to it. There's some really good quotes from the book. The most important attribute you can cultivate is not talent or IQ, but the ability to constantly learn and adapt. Just until recently, I didn't know what I should learn or adapt to. But thanks to some guys in this space, I found it. And now I have a good idea of which direction I want to go into. But back to the Gen Z's. I'm a Gen Z in corporate, of course. I'm not going to that meeting that's during my lunchtime. Sorry, take it off the schedule. I'm a Gen Z in corporate, of course. The screen is hitting the keyboard at five o'clock on a dot. Maybe even 4.30. Sorry. I'm a Gen Z in corporate. What do you mean? What is a mental health day? Figure it out because I'm taking one a month. Sorry. In the age of disruption, it's adapt or perish. When everyone has access to the same information, the true differentiator becomes how you use it. The new form of power is knowledge, knowing how to find, filter, and apply information quickly. Again, it is not my intention to play the quote unquote generation bashing game but from my vantage point in Asia, where I see young kids that go to cram school for two hours after they finish school, 
and the same is happening in China and Korea. But there are also people that are coming hungry from Nepal and India to Japan and not only competing, but even outperforming some of the Japanese kids. This is the new world that we find this attitude that's going to compete against. And it makes me worry. Okay, Torian, thanks for being here. Thank you. Um, you say you have no problem telling your employer no if they ask you to do something outside your job description. Does that happen a lot? Absolutely. Every day I go to work and I'm expected to be cross-trained without any bump in pay. I'm expected to cover for people who, quite frankly, they decide when and if they want to come to work. And it's just part of my job to do their work just because I'm there and it's a team effort. And so, no, I'm not going to overextend myself and bend over backwards for companies who don't take all the little nuances of being an employee of theirs into consideration. What do you do? So I'm a patient care coordinator. I just make sure that the waiting room is taken care of and that people are seated and get to see their doctor on a timely manner. So what's the last thing your boss asked you to do that you said, no, not, no, not going to do that? Verifying insurance. I'm not going to do that. In a flat world, jobs are not lost. They are transformed. It is up to us to reinvent ourselves. We all know when we work a job that there's a balance of how much we have to do to keep our job, how much we have to do to be above average or do a quote unquote good job, and how much we have to do to possibly advance in our career. And every job has a balance of those three things, depending on what you want out of a job. But what has happened in recent times is that because the environment is changing so quickly, many times we have a confidence that that job will always be there. And this kind of attitude, I think, is extremely dangerous in today's society. Why not? Because I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't think that while you're there getting paid to be there, that you're subject to doing whatever needs to be done while you're there. You're a specialist. I'm a specialist, yes. That's a very good way to put it, because while I'm there, I'm only there to do what I'm being paid to do. Gen Z employees. No, we don't. It, it's been a nightmare with 95% of the ones that we have hired. I once terminated an employee and her father called me 24 hours later asking how he could help get his daughter's job back. The timing of the job fair was ominous as it was just a couple of years before the international 2008 banking crisis. At that time, I didn't have the qualifications that they were looking for of being a coder with the ability to write algorithms that could automate investment schemes. But the experience taught me a very valuable lesson about how quickly the job market changes in this new century. Unless you're in America in an academic setting where you have immigrants from countries where a high level of scholastic achievement is expected, it's very difficult for many young kids in America to understand the level of competition that there is around the world for a slice of that American pie, that success. And so I don't blame Gen Z kids for the attitudes or the way that they have of looking at the world, but it's this kind of attitude that is not gonna be able to compete with the kids that are going to that cram school three hours a day after school. That's a terrible approach to work because there's an opportunity cost of doing the bare minimum. People notice excellent work. And with that then comes opportunity for growth and career advancement. And so people in your generation look at it as they're not paying me and they're not gonna take my time and steal my time, but it's really an investment in your future to go above and beyond because the people higher up, depending upon where you wanna go in life, will notice that kind of work. So I, I, I disagree completely with that approach. Is above and beyond on my contract? That's the mentality shift that I'm suggesting that you make if you wanna go beyond where you're at today. The flat world is a level playing field, but it's up to you to seize the opportunities. Break in the sheets in the calculator. Break in the sheets in the calculator. Rock three, seven, away. Rock three, seven, away. As a sandwich generation, I think for Gen Xers, we've come to understand that we'll never really have the longevity that our boomer parents had. And so we've had to adapt as we go. And part of that is just, increasing your competence and that has to be the game going forward and maybe we got to jump on younger generations but we also understand having a good reputation for doing good competent hard work and expanding your skill set is basically the only way to guarantee that you're going to survive in this new environment Seriously.
waist and a blowy. Cinch in waist and a blowy. Stretch on the wrist and a cutty. A word of wisdom to anyone looking to come to East Asia to either be a passport bro or even to integrate into society and be a worker or a taxpayer. They don't really do mental health days here. So if you're looking to do like a mental health day a month, that's going to not only cause a great deal of strain to your coworkers because they're going to have to pick up your slack, but they're probably going to be irritated because you're expected to essentially come to work when you're not sick or have a family emergency. And it is this kind of thinking that seems to be an entitlement to Gen Z that may be a limiter in a market that is more competitive and more flat than has ever existed. If a Gen Z is watching this particular video and you're asking my advice, be willing and ready to work hard. The only difference between working hard for Gen Z's and working hard for boomers is that instead of working hard for a company for 40, 50 years and they retire you, you're gonna work hard for yourself and your name. And so that when people say your name and your brand, they're gonna understand that they're dealing with someone who should be paid. And if you're not willing to do that, there are people in Asia that are ready to step up to the plate, promise. There are Filipinos who speak fluent English. There are Africans and Asians that are ready to jump at any of these STEM jobs that may pop open. And they're willing to do those jobs at a fraction of what Americans are because they can live off a fraction. And so in this environment, the entitlement that we may have had because we're Americans, that may be short-lived and the environment that is ahead may be one where you protect your brand and your name for being a good hard competent worker by showing up and doing a good job all the while building your resume your skill set and thinking about your next venture that is the new work 40 years and retire with a pension strange new world but the world is flat and that world is here Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment below. I'll catch you in the next video. Take care, guys.